you guys first started raising, was there any pushback or did you have to kind of to, to Michael's point, did you have to really educate them on what it was that they were investing in on mm -hmm. the industry, where things were going? Yeah, I think thankfully our messaging was easier than perhaps some other companies in our batch. Uh, so if you're developing something like a very obscure developer's tool or backend API, it, it requires definitely a, a much more difficult and creative explanation. But our pitch was that we ship weed from brands to dispensaries. And I thought that was a pretty simple enough thing to sell. And I think especially in 2019, when we were going through YC, there was a lot of enthusiasm about the new space, uh, the changing regulations and a rapid destigmatization of the substance itself. I think even five years ago, cannabis was mostly seen as a recreational you know, drug and uh, something that teens abuse to get high or et cetera. And I think I, I felt that firsthand growing up in Virginia. But just in the last five years, public opinion has shifted quite drastically. Yeah. And so you just closed the big round. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Max was just here telling us about it. Uh-huh. Do you want to share your story on how this uh, almost sure. didn't happen? Raising money in cannabis is definitely challenging and it's a, it's a different beast because um, essentially what we have is a technology company that happens to own some infrastructure and the license to actually transport the goods. And a lot of people ask like, why don't you just decide to be a software company? It would be, would be so much more investable, easier. The reason why we did both was because it was what we felt was best for the customer experience. When you order something, you expect to get it in a certain amount of time. And in a immature industry, it's really important that you control uh, that experience. Um, so we made that kind of tough call to be both plant touching and technology early on, but we kind of are now running into this problem where kind of Silicon Valley tech investors can't invest into our company because we're still plant touching and they might have LPA restrictions that say they can't invest in vices or federally legal uh, goods or whatever services uh, in cannabis. And then we also have a kind of a class of supply, more traditional supply chain investors who fail to see that we really are a technology company. They try to assess us only on the trucking aspect. And, and Vince, my co-founder, leads a lot of these fundraising conversations, but it's really that uh, conveying that message correctly and, and finding that intersection of people who's uh, first comfortable investing in cannabis, but also see our potential of being something potentially really scalable. We started raising the round early this year, um, and you know, frankly, it wasn't a terrible time to raise. You know, there's certainly a lot of enthusiasm around cannabis with the Democratic Party taking supermajority. There was a lot of kind of promise and hype around like, will cannabis uh, get furthered, and from a regulatory perspective, in the next couple of years, and uh, that led to kind of a, a quick rise in the public markets. You, you mentioned that you invested in public cannabis stocks. Although that enthusiasm has somewhat quelled because uh, it seems like the administration has other priorities for, for now. But regardless, uh, we were able to kind of find the interest pretty quickly. By February, we had determined a lead who essentially started the due diligence process. By March and April, we had a term sheet. Um, we had all the legal docs kind of final. And the last steps were just kind of doing the paperwork and corralling the rest of the, the investors in. But sometime last month, it came to our attention or it was brought to our attention by our lead investor uh, or to be lead investor that they could no longer invest in Navis. And it was due to a legal technicality because uh, they had invested in a cannabis testing lab before. And uh, there's a, a small fine print in most states regulations. Um, it's kind of an idea of separation of church and state where if you are a financial interest holder or an owner in a testing lab, you cannot actually own an operating company. And I think that that regulation was probably written in, with good intentions. But it was certainly disappointing to to hear this at the 11th hour. We had essentially told everyone that uh, this was happening and to go back and tell them, um, actually, our, our lead who's been vouching for this round is pulling out. Please remain in the round. And I think we really kind of pulled off this gymnastics. Thankfully, one of our earlier investors um, rose up to the occasion and decided to take the lead instead. And the outcome at the end was favorable. So definitely grateful. That's amazing. 